、俺にメガロボックスを教えてくれた人に言われたんです。同じ時代に心の底からそいつに勝ちたいと思える相手がいるのは幸せなことだ。もしそういう人間に出会ったら、絶対に目を離すなって。やっと出会えたんです。その相手に。Everybody, welcome to another lesson of learning Japanese. Today we're going to be covering another anime line of the day. We're going to be taking a line from the show Megalo Boxing.、Uh, Megalo Box, not boxing. This line is going to be from the 12th episode of the show, and it's a pretty lengthy one. It is going to read in English. If you're ever lucky enough to run into a fighter in your generation who you want to win against from the bottom of your heart, Consider yourself blessed. If you actually manage to find someone like that, never let him out of your sight. So, this is a line that's said by the character who's actually kind of like the antagonist of this show, or more appropriately, the kind of final boss guy who the main character is going to fight against. He says this line in describing the main character because he's been observing the main character's、um, accomplishments and he's、um, acknowledged him as a very super.、Um, Destined fighter that he was pretty much destined to meet and go against. So, this is a line said by him to describe how he really wants to fight the main character, basically. So, you heard the clip at the beginning, and we、uh, provided some more of the lines before and after just to give the context of the scene that I just explained. We are only gonna break down the Japanese of the、uh, lines that I said in English. So, let's just play the clip of those.、Um, Focus lines、uh, again, real quick in Japanese, and then we'll jump into the breakdown. Onaji Jidaini Kokoro no Sokokara, so it's in Kachitai to Moira Aitega Irnoa, Shia was in a Kotoda. Most so you Ningen need the Atara Zetani Mel Hanas Nut. Okay, so there are three lines right there. We are gonna cover the first two,、um, and then when we're done with that, and if the lesson hasn't been too long already, we'll do the third one too. But for now, for the first line, we have Onaji Jidai ni Kokoro no Soko kara soitsu ni kachitai to omoeru aite ga iru no wa shiawase na koto da. Onaji Jidai ni Kokoro no Soko kara soitsu ni kachitai to omoeru aite ga iru no wa shiawase na koto da. So let's break down this line、uh, word by word.、Uh, first up, we have the word onaji, which just means basically same. It's going to be modifying the word right after it, which is the word jidai, which means basically generation. So onaji jidai is meaning、uh, same generation. We have the particle ni right after that to basically mark the onaji jidai, the same generation, as a time period, basically. So in the same generation, pretty much. After that, we have a noun of a noun modification with the two words kokoro and soko. Kokoro means a、uh, heart, pretty darn common word, and soko means basically the soul or the bottom of, so the bottom of your heart. Kokoro no soko. We have another、uh, particle coming in here with the kara right there,、um, but it's gonna work a slightly different from the ni that was marking something as a time. This time, kara is gonna mark kokoro no soko as basically a location. So, bottom of your heart, from the bottom of your heart is what that's gonna mean. Following that, we have the word soitsu, which is gonna mean basically kind of that guy. It's kind of weird how it's being used here if you're gonna interpret it like in English, kind of, because usually when you say that guy,、um, you already established. Um, a person, and now you're using the word that to refer back to that established word. But here,、uh, the soitsu is appearing before the established word, which is going to be the word aite, which is going to appear later on in the sentence. So, yeah, let's look out for that as we continue on. So, after soitsu, we have the word ni, which is、uh, a particle that's used with the word katsu, which means to win, the verb that means to win. It's used with the verb、uh, because when you say win against someone, you say that someone ni katsu, to win against that someone. So, here we're saying to win against that guy.、Um, we're gonna conjugate katsu, the word that means to win, into its desirative tai form to mean to want to win.、Uh, then we're gonna put this in、uh, basically a quote and use the verb omo to mean basically to think or to feel. So, like to have the feeling of wanting to win against that guy is basically what that would translate to. Here we do note that.、Uh, The particle to, which is basically just the quoting particle, and then the usage of the verb omo, which means to think or to feel, is used in its potential form here. So omoeru, which means basically 
it's um, expressing how you're able to feel that you want to win against that person. So that's kind of um, expressing the importance of that guy, that person. Because basically by meeting him, you are able to feel that you really want to win against him. And so everything that we've covered so far basically is going to be a clause that modifies the next word which is the noun word which we said would appear which is the word aite which means basically um, it's a word that we've come across a lot in these Japanese lessons. It's always a bit of a mouthful to explain. It just basically means the opposing or the other party involved in whatever situation you're talking about and so it could be a kind of a good thing such as like a partner or a friend or it could be a bad thing too like an opponent or an enemy so it just really means the other person or party involved in the situation and in this case of course it's going to be referring to a fighter or opponent because this show is about boxing and he's talking about boxing so the other party involved in a boxing match is of course just going to be your opponent and so like i said everything that we covered up to the word aite is basically a clause that modifies aite so is going to be describing the aite, which is the opponent. So basically, if that phrase right there or that clause translates to um, to be able to feel that you really want to win against him from the bottom of your heart, um, the fighter who's in the same generation as you or whatever, that whole clause modifying the word aite, which means basically opponent, is going to then translate to an opponent that is able to make you feel that you really want to win against him no matter what uh, from the bottom of your heart and uh, he's in the same generation as you <laughs> and so now basically even though we covered that whole clause which was its own sentence since it's used to describe the noun here it's not really the whole sentence and so far we kind of have an incomplete sentence. We just have a noun now, a noun that's described very specifically by a clause, but we need that noun to perform an action or whatever to make this a complete sentence for real. So it is going to be performing basically just the existential verb to be, to exist. Ga iru. So aite ga iru is going to mean basically the opponent exists. Um, he's there. He's... Yeah, he's there. <laughs> now what we're going to do further is we're going to nominalize um, that iru verb to be um, with the no right after it, so that will basically translate to something like existing or being. So an opponent who makes you want to feel blah blah blah, defeat him from the bottom of your heart, existing. And so since that no turns the verb action that we use to make this into an actual sentence into a noun, again, we have an incomplete sentence now because it's just a noun and it needs to, you know, do something to be a complete sentence. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the very simple construction of a noun is a noun uh, with the particle wa right there, the topic marker basically marking iru no as the topic, so opponent existing is blank. And now the blank we see here is shiawase na koto da. And this is gonna be the word shiawase, which is uh, a na adjective to mean happy. Since it's a na adjective and it's modifying a noun right after it, we use the uh, particle na right afterwards. Uh, then we have the word koto, which just means thing. And so shiawase na koto is basically gonna kind of translate to basically happy thing or that is happiness or something like that. And you see here that the koto is a noun word um, and to end the sentence, we simply just plug in that kopila da at the end there. So now let's review this line. Onaji jidai ni kokoro no soko kara soitsu ni kachitai to omoeru aite ga iru no wa shiawase na koto da. Onaji jidai ni this is going to translate to, let's see here, literally an opponent of the same generation who makes you um, able to feel that you really want to win against them from the bottom of your heart existing is happiness basically. Very weird, literally translated, so of course in our natural translation um, the speaker here, he is quoting something that someone said to him, so it also, so that kind of also affects the way we word this. And so our wording is, if you're ever lucky enough to run into a fighter in your generation who you want to win against from the bottom of your heart, consider yourself blessed. All right, so let's now move on into the second line. Uh, we have the line, Moshi soyu ningen ni deattara, zetai ni me o hanasunate. soyu ningen ni deattara. 
So let's break this down word by word. Uh, first up, we have the word moshi, which is um, just kind of this uh, word that we use when we're using the hypothetical form. Um, and we will do that as we will see later on with the verb conjugation of tada, which is hypothetical form. We had the word moshi on at the beginning of the sentence when we do that, um, just to kind of kind of emphasize the hypothetical nature of the line or maybe just it's not really mandatory or anything but um, it's commonly included so this will just basically translate to if but when we use the verb conjugation of the hypothetical form that will also translate to if um, but don't interpret it as if appearing in the sentence twice they just both kind of work together basically moving on we have the word soyu which is going to translate to basically such um, it's an adjective and it's basically going to translate to such yeah so it's modifying the word right after which is the word ningen which of course means a uh, person so so you ningen is going to mean basically such a person or that kind of person or someone like that we're going to mark so you ningen with the particle ni uh, because that's the particle we use with the verb that we're about to use which is the word uh, dao which means basically to encounter to meet someone um, it is going to be conjugated like i said earlier into the tada form which is basically the hypothetical form which means basically if so as opposed to um, to meet or to encounter this is if encounter if meet of course the implied subject here is um, you because he's quoting someone who was talking to him so if you ever meet and so that's the first half of the sentence right there. Moshi, so you ningen ni datara. If you ever meet such a person. And now we say, of course, what happens if you do. And we have the words zetai ni meo hanasuna. Zetai ni is just basically an adverbial phrase that means absolutely uh, something along those lines. We have the word meo, which is basically eyes. We have the direct object marker o, marking the eyes as a direct object. And then we have the verb hanasu, which means basically to separate or um, to take your eyes off, basically. So it is going to be conjugated, kind of not really a conjugation. It's kind of a more slangy usage conjugation where you just add na at the end of a dictionary form of verb to mean don't do that verb as like a command. So meo hanasuna is going to mean basically don't take your eyes or don't. Yeah, don't take your eyes off of him. And so yeah, zetai ni meo hanasuna is gonna mean don't, absolutely don't take your eyes off. Um, more naturally, we're gonna translate that to never let him out of your sight. And so then we have moshi soyu ningen ni deattara zetai ni meo hanasuna. Mo soyu ningen ni deattara zetai ni meo hanasuna. And let's translate that literally. Um, if you encounter that kind of person, absolutely don't take your eyes off him. And so you might be wondering what that final hard te at the end there is. Well, I said at the beginning how this line is actually him quoting something that someone said to him. So that's just the quoting marker, the hard te quoting marker for him to indicate that he's quoting something someone said to him and he isn't actually saying something that is his own words originally. And you can see how that is indicated with the line right after this that he says, Yato de aetan des, sono aete ni. And now this is obviously him speaking for himself. He's saying his own words now. He's not quoting anyone anymore. And this, of course, uh, we're not going to break it down one by word because it's pretty simple and short, but it translates to finally I was able to meet, implied him, that fighter. Um, yeah, so no aitene, that fighter. And so yeah, I think this lesson has gone on long enough. We're not going to cover that line word by word. Um, and so now let's review the two lines that we went over. Onaji jidai ni kokoro no soka kara soitsu ni kachitai to omoeru aitei ga iru no wa shiowase na koto da. If you're ever lucky enough to run into a fighter in your own generation who you want to win against from the bottom of your heart, consider yourself blessed. Moshi soyu ningen ni deattara zetai ni me o hanasunate. If you actually manage to find someone like that, never let him out of your sight. Um, he said. Onaji jidai ni kokoro no soko kara. Alright, so the last thing to do now is of course to review the grammar patterns that we came across. These were two pretty lengthy lines and so we should be coming across a decent amount as we review them here. We had a noun of a noun modification with the kokoro no soko. We had the desirative tai form of a verb. Um, with the kachitai, so to win is katsu, so kachitai is going to mean to want to win. 
We have the tall mole grammar pattern to basically mark something in a quote and say, I think that or I feel that. And then we in turn conjugated the omo into its potential form, omoeru, to mean to be able to feel, to be able to think. We have the ga iru grammar pattern, a very common uh, grammar phrase, verb phrase, uh, it's the existential verbs iru, aru, whatever, to mean to be, to exist, to be there. Then we nominalize the verb by adding no after the dictionary form of the verb. So iru turned into iru no, and so instead of basically to exist, it turned into existing. We have the usage of a na adjective modifying a noun, so very simple right there, shiawase na koto. Moving on into the second line, we had the moshi, which is used with the uh, Tada grammar pattern slash conjugational form to express the hypothetical, so if. Uh, then, last but not least, uh, we had the uh, kind of slangish uh, conjugation of adding the na after a dictionary form of verb to just really simply mean don't do that verb, kind of like a command. Don't do that. Um, uh, then, kind of the last, last thing is the hard te marker there to mark a quote basically to. Uh, yeah, express that he's quoting someone. He's not really saying his own lines right now. So there you go, two lines covered in succession, um, all part of a longer conversation that we have included those other lines in this conversation, a decent amount of them in the clip at the beginning. So now what we're going to do, of course, is we're going to play that more lengthier clip uh, right now at the end so that you can make sure that you master the two lines that we covered as well as use the context of the two lines that we covered to um, see if you can follow along with the other contextual lines. So here we go. なたに出会う Alright, that's gonna wrap it up for this episode of Anime Line of the Day. Remember, if there were grammar patterns mentioned for this line, they'll be mentioned in the description or the pinned comment below with links to the individual lessons on them. You can also probably find them in the playlist of our complete grammar video series shown on the screen right here alongside our anime playlist. And last but not least, don't forget to try to translate the bonus line we provided. Leave your translation in a comment below. Check out our Patreon, like the video, and subscribe. With all that said and done, see you next time.